I'm pretty sure the Battlefront Classic Edition is going to be great, but there's some problems. Some objective, some subjective, and some that might get fixed if they aren't fixed by release. Those of you who know me or have seen my Battlefront uploads and my over 30 video playlists know that I hold this game dearly, as I could definitely say it's my favorite video game ever for various reasons. But anyway, let's go off of what's confirmed. Split screen. Pretty cool that the game has it, but in a game about war, it's just two player? The original Xbox version that you could still play via backwards compatibility had four player split screen. So why the hell does a console release two or three generations earlier have four player split screen when your modern port does not? How the hell does that make sense? I guess they're taking advantage of the fact that the PS2 version of Battlefront 2 and the original Battlefront only had two player split screen, but still. I can accept 4 player split screen not running on that dumpster fire switch, but I have an Xbox Series X and a PS5. Use it! Add it to the original Battlefront as well. Now there was something that this Battlefront port could have done for me to let this slide. They could have added online co-op for various offline features like the campaign and Galactic Conquest. You could play the Rise of the Empire campaign in 4 player split screen along with Galactic Conquest. Them taking co-op down to two players hurts this, especially Galactic Conquest, but they could have had online co-op options to make up for this, as I'm sure there's someone who's going to cuckishly argue, oh, nobody uses split screen anyway, but I know dang well that online co-op is something that would be utilized. I remember seeing a few people in comment sections wanting Galactic Conquest online, which I think should happen via private matches at the very least, but I highly doubt it's happening as it probably would have been announced as a selling point already. I'd love to be wrong whether it's on release or a patch, but we'll see. But yeah, the split screen scenario is pretty sad when taking the few modern games that do it into account like various Halo games and Crash Team Racing, both games that look prettier than Battlefront, so what the hell. I've already accepted that cuck devs neglect local play, but this shouldn't happen to a game that already had it. We'll see if they have split screen online at least like the original did I think. I'm sure someone will call this petty, but whatever, I have more pros and cons and it's not going to be the bitchy cons like a few PC gamers bitching about having to rebuy the cheap game for a cheap price. Spare change, spare change ma'am even though I'm sure the server improvements made will be worth the money with its 64 player online that will have the DLC and modded features as base game. I saw footage of the original DLC modded onto PC and I have to say it didn't really run the same as the original Xbox version despite being pretty close. Anyway, beyond the servers that I hope run nearly perfectly, I'm worried about things they may overlook things that won't change. Things for the modern online audience that is more likely to abuse exploits in the times of the original release. Like map bugs where people can clip through the map and ships to shoot at people or capital ship points etc. Along with other things that should change like the lightsabers being inconsistent and not working at certain times or angles when it comes to blocking saber attacks at certain angles. There is also the infinite block glitch, the force move hitboxes don't work as well on the light side when playing on the Republic era. This can be seen with the exact same character like Obi-Wan and Yoda when played on both eras. The force choke can be glitched so that the choke can be held infinitely or it can be held while Emperor and Dooku are zapping you. I may have taken advantage of this myself when it comes to my raw battlefront clips but this needs to be fixed. I even think it should be taken a step further by having the force choke be blockable like the other force moves, as the villains could have a crazy edge if stuff like this doesn't get addressed. I know some consumed product shills may say I'm asking for too much, but no, I'm not. Pandemic would have made these patches themselves if Pandemic had the privilege that other shitty devs like DICE take for granted via their DLC being characters that should have been there from the very start. 
along with other shitty facts like Yoda having a heal move that heals others that used to work fine at launch, but then the final patch has it so it doesn't work consistently? How the fuck does an older patch have something that's superior to a final patch? Like, what the hell? But anyway, I think there's a good chance that some of these problems will change, but we'll see if this video stays relevant after launch. There's probably a few more bugs I can list off, such as the Death Star kill counter counting as two for one side, or the hero and villain AI running like crap on the DLC map Yavin Arena, or AI getting stuck in the corner of Naboo, as many others have brought up, along with a few other bugs that should change, or maybe some minor bugs that can possibly stay that one could consider skill ceiling gameplay text. Of course, it is confirmed that Heroes vs. Villains is going to be on all the other maps, which is great, along with DLC heroes being added to each map, which may shake up the meta with Kit Fisto's unique grenade-like force orbs. This change being made has me hopeful that some other minor changes I mentioned could be made. I know most of the community doesn't know shit about this original Xbox exclusive DLC, but I hope they slightly tweak the weird timing those DLC heroes took with having to pull the right trigger in a certain way for the combos to happen. Like Kit Fisto's punches where you had to press right trigger and then press left trigger right after right trigger to do his punches. Yeah, change that shit to uh, right stick or L3 please. I do worry about the first Battlefront not aging as well due to sniper or vehicle heavy map design on their version of Geonosis as an example, which is going to be like a hellish D-Day to walk across when taking snipers into account, along with the possible heavy advantages of the Droidica, which I think should be addressed by giving some units a limited number that can be picked, similar to what Battlefront 2 did. Hell, I even think they should add sprinting, as it's quite goofy as roll spamming is faster than the movement speed, but I know and can accept that they won't change that and add sprinting even though I don't think it would harm anything despite what purists will say. Hell, for Battlefront 2, I think Anakin should be on the hero side for heroes vs villains on a few maps with the exception of Mustafar and maybe Coruscant. But that probably won't happen for purest reasons once again, along with other things like Dooku getting more than one map and having the ability to drop a flag and capture the flag like you can in Halo. But I can admit that some of these requests are minor enough to be excused if they aren't done. But online co-op not being added to compensate for 4 player going away still doesn't sit right, as it therefore gives my Xbox backwards compatible version a 1-up over the current release. I shouldn't have a reason to play my older version over what you guys are putting out. You guys might want to buy that original Xbox 4 player version in case they delist it like they did for those older GTA games. But anyway, I shouldn't have to deal with original Xbox limited draw distance on 4 player split screen when you guys could have done it better than a console that's 2 or more generations behind. As said before, we'll see what happens or changes, but hey. At least I was playing the classic Battlefronts on my Xbox One for around 5 years along with other Star Wars classics like Revenge of the Sith, while PlayStation needed this port. It makes you think about certain preconceived notions and bandwagons, but anyway. I'll address some more of the bogus classic edition criticisms beyond the PC takes I already touched upon. Crossplay. I like crossplay, but I don't care about it that much for a few logical reasons. It's a Star Wars game that was the most successful in its PS2 era, that outsold everything, including Knights of the Old Republic that everyone likes to suck off, even though Battlefront is clearly better for the reasons that matter most in a video game, gameplay. The game also climbs the PS5 pre-order list. Anyway, my point is that the game will probably have enough players on PlayStation and Xbox to not need crossplay. I honestly don't even want crossplay for the sake of not dealing with the PC sniper edge in combination with cheaters that the platform is objectively more likely to bring. Trust me, I played enough Dead by Daylight. I would welcome crossplay between Xbox and PlayStation though, but chances are crossplay means PC included, so I'll pass. 
All right, and then there's the new Star Wars gaming fans that started off with the Microbrain EA Battlefront 2, where there's tons of Saber users in a game where the hitboxes are crap. Objectively, crap. Oh guys, support this for Battlefront 3. Fuck you. What type of dumbass mentality is that? Who the hell gets interested in a game for the sake of another game? That level of disrespect is like going to Hell's Kitchen and then hyping up the dessert before the fucking food arrives. A few bugs aside, these older battlefronts are superior. Better hit detection overall on sabers where you don't get hit meters away from the lightsaber or get hit by a lightsaber seconds after the attack finished. Multi-man vehicles unlike the current one, better planet selection, more maps playable on the main mode conquest, unlike the current version that doesn't have Andor as a conquest map. Oops, I mean supremacy map. Maps being replayable on both eras, you don't have to kill yourself to get a hero or vehicle, or sit in the menu, spamming select over your hero. I could keep going on this shit. The current one may have some pros over the original beyond graphics, like hero ships and the saber blocking being handled, but that's something that would have been patched if Pandemic had modern privileges that DICE takes for granted. As said before, via issues that still remain after two-ish years of their patches. This topic may get its own full video to be honest, but anyway, don't hit me with shit like progression and gun choices and customization. When it comes to guns, there's usually one gun per class that's just the best one, if not two at generous best along with obvious no-shit gun customization options like an increased rate of fire. What's the point of choice when there's clearly wrong answers? What's the point of progression like shitty obvious to pick star cards when that just creates an unfair edge that a leveled up player has over a newer player that could be just as skilled, if not more? Progression isn't needed? Hell, I'd argue it being detrimental. It's for players with ADHD. You shouldn't be playing multiplayer games exclusively to unlock things. You should be playing a game for fun. That shit isn't needed. I may be disappointed about how the classic edition could be handled, but put some respect on that franchise. Hell, you can even still put some respect on the EA Battlefronts despite everything I just said, as I still see dumb critics and bandwagoners bash those EA Battlefronts for the wrong reasons. Like a lack of a campaign even though the very first Battlefront barely had one, along with people saying it lacked content even though it had more maps than the 2005 Battlefront 2 despite having less planets. Notice how my criticisms were better than those shitty regurgitated Angry Joe criticisms where he bitched about a character display. I bitched about core gameplay fundamentals. Anyway, that's about it for this video of my bipolar thoughts. I'm hyped, worried, and could be disappointed. Battlefront to me has always been the heart of Star Wars to me when it comes to Star Wars media beyond the six movies themselves. A franchise that embodies everything and lets you play as everything in this war sandbox in a declining game market and world. That light of those past good times shine even brighter than they did before. A time where independent thought and critical thinking was less of a rarity. When people were less likely to copy their shitty opinions or game choices off of the internet or shorts feed. You'd walk into a game store and choose the game yourself instead of an algorithm that would subconsciously manipulate people. Anyway. Rambling aside, I want to see this game be handled in the best way possible, in the way Pandemic would if they could patch it as said before. I just... I just want the best Star Wars Battlefront.